Hello and welcome to our Detecting DNS Backdoors video from ActiveCountermeasures.com. For this video, we're going to look at how AI Hunter can detect common DNS backdoors. But let's set the stage. First, what is DNS? DNS is kind of the internet's phone book, automatic phone book. It's the way your systems will resolve websites like www.ActiveCountermeasures.com and resolve it back to an IP address that your computer is able to identify. Now, bad guys like to use these backdoors because DNS is usually allowed outbound, outbound from an environment. Also, many intrusion detection and intrusion prevention systems will ignore DNS traffic because the results are variable. And finally, a lot of the servers that are doing the communication, i.e. the DNS servers that are doing the resolution, are actually whitelisted. So you just can't simply say that IP address is evil per se because it could be your DNS server. Now, most of the time, traditionally, when people are looking for DNS backdoors, you'll use something like Bro or NetFlow data, or you'll try to pull your DNS logs off of your domain controller. And some of these things can be daunting for most users. For Bro, you're going to get data like this. You'll actually dump all of the DNS logs. And you can see that we have nanobotninjas.com showing up again and again and again and again. And you can also see that it's communicating with 8.8.8.8, which is Google's DNS server. Now, as I mentioned, this can be a little bit intimidating for many people. Not all, but many people can be a bit intimidated trying to parse through this data. And trying to script it and pull out exactly what you're looking for can be very, very difficult. So what we've done in AI Hunter is we've actually changed the way that we actually approach and visualize that data to make it a lot easier for a general security analyst to detect your common DNS backdoors. So once again, we're at our opening screen for Offensive Countermeasures, or AI Hunter. And this will be renamed Active Countermeasures here shortly. But Offensive Countermeasures and Active Countermeasures will both go to the same place because of the DNS entries. At any rate, so now if I want to load the data that I'm interested in, I will click the little gear. And then I'll load a whole bunch of data sets. Now, whenever you run AI Hunter in your environment, the data sets will be sorted by date. So you'll run bro at feed it into Rita. Rita will do its processing, usually overnight. And then the next morning, boom, all of a sudden you'll get all this data wonderfully displayed in AI Hunter. Now, I've named these so they're easy for me to identify which thing I want to demonstrate in which video. So I'm just going to select DNS cap because that's the one we're looking at right now. And I'm going to jump straight into beacons and show you a problem. So I know it's weird to be talking about, well, this is a problem, but it kind of shows how you can look at it from a different way. Another issue with a lot of the DNS backdoors is they really don't have solid frequency intervals. So we've got a bunch of intervals that are showing up that have very low scores, most likely not malicious to Akamai and Microsoft. So really, we don't have anything that jumps up from a frequency analysis to really make us think, hey, this looks evil. But let's go and let's look at the DNS tab. Now, the DNS tab displays uh, the subdomains. So you would expect lots and lots and lots of .com domains. In fact, here there's 32,281. That would be your google.com, your yahoo.com, gmail.com, activecountermeasures.com. Those would be all of the .coms that you would see. And you would expect a large number of subdomains to end in .com. But look at the second and third entries. The second and third entries are nanobot ninjas. You would never expect one domain to have 30,000 subdomains associated with it. That sets up a red flag immediately, just right off the bat. So now you know that you have something that you have to actually focus in on and you have to look at. And once again, the reason why those subdomains work that way is because the way DNS backdoors work is they force the back or the backdoor forces DNS servers to do a lookup every single time. And here you can see, I'll make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it, kind of cover up my slide and change my medium a little bit. But you can see that we have this random value here. In this situation, I have 292.0244. The next one, 608734. And then it goes cat.nanobotninjas. Those are called subdomains. And as I mentioned, trying to parse through your DNS logs to find this can be very, very hard. Trying to script to find it can be very, very hard. But an AI hunter, we make it very simple to identify these back doors. I also want to show you blacklisted and show you another way that this kind of uh, articulates the problem. One, the interval for this back door down below is very erratic. It doesn't have a very strong heartbeat with it. But this is our back door. And the back door is communicating to 8.8.8.8, .8 .8 .8, which is 
Google, right? It's Google's DNS server. And you can click on it and you can see if there's any other domains that are associated with that as well. But here we have Google 8.8.8.8, which is not an evil IP address in and of itself. But we make it in the blacklist because it's very odd to see enterprises have systems on the inside of their network connecting out to Google's DNS server. It should go through approved DNS servers in your organization. And here you can see the system that was opening the connection, 10.234.234.105, made 1,201 connections, which is very abnormal for a host to make that many DNS connections to the exact same DNS server. And also look at the bytes transferred. A tremendous amount of data was transferred. So with this, with AI Hunter, we can easily identify a sketchy domain in this situation. It was nanobot ninjas by a large number of subdomains, which is unexpected. And we can look at the total amount of data that was transferred between those systems going outbound with the number of connections in this situation, connecting to what is a known good IP address, which is Google, but doing very, very bad things. So that makes it all very easy to do. So thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.